After Jesus' resurrection, in his last words to his disciples, he tells them, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. They certainly didn't waste any time. By the end of the first century, Christians could be found from India to Italy. And within just a few hundred years, the gospel had spread all the way from China to Spain. However, the church's rapid growth didn't come without serious challenges. The Roman Empire was the most powerful force in the world and saw Christianity as a rising threat. Since Christians believed that there was only one true God, they refused to worship the emperor like the Romans did. In response, the emperors like Nero and Diocletian had many Christians killed and their churches destroyed. In fact, Christianity was outlawed in the Roman Empire until the Emperor Constantine legalized it in AD 313. By that time, Christianity was already so popular that within 40 years, it would become the official religion of the empire. Free from persecution, Christianity began to thrive culturally. It produced great thinkers and writers like Augustine of Hippo. It inspired beautiful paintings, majestic sculptures, and regal architecture. Churches themselves became works of art. Christianity not only benefited from the empire's support, but also began to influence Roman culture and laws. For instance, the church worked to outlaw traditional practices like the abandoning of unwanted infants that were opposed by Christian teachings. Meanwhile, the church continued to expand. In AD 595, Pope Gregory I sent a group of monks on a mission to convert the British. This missionary voyage would plant the early seeds for the founding of the Methodist movement a thousand years later. Eventually, the Roman Empire crumbled and the people were thrown into chaos. As countries rose and fell, the church remained strong. In fact, Christianity's power grew until tensions began to rise within the church. On one side was the church as a spiritual leader. Over centuries, a monastic tradition emerged that valued simplicity and obedience. These monks spent much of their time in prayer, studying scripture and helping the poor. On the other side was the church as a political power. In the aftermath of Rome's collapse, the Pope was no longer just a religious leader, but a political ruler. He even had his own army. The church was also wealthy. Some people, like Francis of Assisi, feared that the church had drifted from the example of Jesus' simple spiritual life. Others believed that the church needed to change its practices so that the common people could participate more in the worship of God. For instance, ever since the church was part of the Roman Empire, the Bible had only been translated into Latin, the language of Rome. But nearly a thousand years after the empire's fall, very few common people spoke Latin so they couldn't read the Bible or even understand much of the church service, which used Latin as well. Reformers wanted the Bible and the service to be entirely in a language the people could understand. The church refused. There were dozens of these issues. People wanted changes, and even though some church leaders agreed, the church itself said no. Eventually, these tensions would be impossible to contain, and a young German pastor would spark a movement that would rock the church and reshape Christian history.